Well, thank you for continuing with us in this uh, quest for wisdom, we're calling it. Um, we are in the book of Proverbs, probably for this session and one more, and then we'll move on to another one of the wisdom books. We've studied uh, through Job, and we're about three-fourths of the way through Proverbs. And uh, again, we're not looking at every single proverb, but sort of sampling some favorites right now and trying to uh, to look at some of the major themes that are addressed in uh, the book of Proverbs as we go through. Uh, somebody sent me a little quote this week that I thought I would share here at the beginning uh, that, that talks about knowledge and wisdom. Uh, it says, knowledge is knowing a tomato is a fruit Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad, which may give us some idea of the difference between knowledge and wisdom, at least in English. Uh, we've seen in, uh, in the book of Proverbs that knowledge and wisdom a lot of times are in parallel and mean basically the same thing, but uh, there is a bit of a difference with the English words, but I thought that was cute and uh, worth sharing with you. So again, we, we had started uh, about chapter 10. There's a section that runs chapter 10 through chapter 22 of Proverbs where we get what we normally think of as Proverbs. So these brief one-verse statements. Uh, one verse doesn't necessarily relate to the next. And uh, they're each addressing some truth. And uh, we were just going through and, and noting some interesting ones, at least interesting to me, I hope they are to you, and you may uh, be attracted to other ones, uh, so I encourage you to read them all, profit from them all. But we had stopped uh, at the end of chapter 17 last time, and going to pick up in chapter 18 with with a few, and, um, and make our way on through the book. Uh, there are three near the beginning of chapter 18, that all address the fool. So, uh, just a reminder, when we see the word fool, uh, it's easy to, I think, misunderstand or confuse what's being addressed. So, the way we sometimes use the word fool and understand it isn't necessarily what's expressed in, in the Proverbs. Uh, the fool is not necessarily a dumb person or unintelligent or stupid, um, fool is a person that refuses to learn, and um, they reject knowledge, they reject training, and, and that kind of thing. So um, I guess we shouldn't substitute the, uh, the, the term stupid or dumb. But, but think of a fool as one who refuses to learn. And, and so sometimes these proverbs address the fool. What's a fool like? Uh, what are some of the things he, he does? That kind of thing. So again, there were three here near the beginning of, of the chapter, of the 18th chapter. Uh, verse 2, for instance, says, A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. So that's a good description of what the Proverbs means by uh, the fool. Um, doesn't understand, really just likes to, to spout off and, and express what he thinks. And um, by that definition, there are a lot of fools, are there not, in our day and time. Everybody likes to express their own opinion, and a few there are, it seems, who who want true knowledge and who want to learn. Um, but uh, that, that's an interesting proverb there, verse 2. Then, if you go down to verse 6, uh, we see another characteristic of a fool. A fool's lips walk into a fight, and his mouth invites a beating. So the fool often gets himself in trouble. His mouth gets him in trouble. Uh, I remember parents saying that to me, your mouth's going to get you in trouble, that kind of thing. Uh, but isn't the, the language itself just um, 
interesting there. A fool's lips walk. Well, whose lips ever walked? But you see the nature of the poetry here. A fool's lips walk into a fight, and his mouth invites a beating. And then the very next, uh, the very next proverb in verse seven: A fool's mouth is his ruin, and his lips are a snare to his soul. So just another way of expressing the same idea uh, that the fool's mouth often gets him in trouble. He uh, says too much. He he doesn't listen and uh, it gets him uh, in all kinds of a mess a lot of times. And so you'll see a lot of Proverbs addressing the fool, um, trying to teach him or at least describe him to others and basically to say, don't be like him. Uh, on to chapter 19, uh, verse 11. Again, just sort of selecting ones that I think are, are memorable and, and meaningful to me. Uh, Proverbs 19.11 Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. If you think about that proverb, um, that really is being like the God that's described in, in the Bible. Um, God is always described as slow to anger and one who covers offenses. That is, uh, uh, overlooks sometimes an offense. And if one would be like God, that is, if one would have good sense, they would be like that. Uh, the fool is not mentioned here in, in Proverbs 19.11, but we can see how the fool would be quick to anger and always, always um, um, complaining about being offended by something, uh, not willing to overlook an offense. Uh, but somebody with good sense does that. Verse 17 of that same chapter is another one. Uh, Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deed. Uh, we have several proverbs encouraging and extolling um, the virtue of taking care of those in need. And um, the the way this one is stated has always been uh, interesting to me. Uh, when you when you're generous with people in need, you lend to the Lord, and God will repay you for that for that good lending, that good deed that you've done. Um, you could make a, a, a pretty significant list of proverbs that that say something like this about taking care of the poor of those in need. Chapter 20, verse 1, is another one we mentioned um, last time that there are a bunch of Proverbs and some longer sections of Proverbs uh, which uh, address the danger of strong drink. Chapter 20, verse 1, is another one. Wine is a mocker, strong drink a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise the dangers of strong drink 20 verse 1 verse 13 of chapter 20 different topic uh, but um, one that is addressed several times throughout it says love not sleep lest you come to poverty open your eyes and you will have plenty of bread uh, we've read about the sluggard the lazy person throughout Proverbs, and even though he's not specifically mentioned here, the idea is, you know, uh, don't love sleep too much. If you love sleep too much, um, you'll end up poor and, and, um, and hungry and that kind of thing. And so um, you have th this idea expressed. And the very next one is, again, it's here you have an uh, example where one 
um, is not necessarily related to the one right beside it. So 20 verse 14 says, Bad, bad, says the buyer, but when he goes away, then he boasts. It's interesting in, in this one you have the, the picture of, of somebody who's uh, you know bar bargaining bartering for something in, in, in an ancient context where that was the way you bought and sold things in a market you know you bargained uh, there weren't set prices and so as this person whoever they are is trying to buy some item they say oh I'm getting an awful deal this is terrible this is terrible but then they go away and they they brag, they boast about what a great deal they got. So, uh, what is being spoken against in this proverb? You know, dishonesty. Um, it doesn't specifically say this is a terrible way to act, but the wise person can discern that. You know, um, he's not being honest with the seller, and he's not being honest with those he's bragging to later. And uh, just, uh, you know, the kind of thing that can be applied to everyday life. Very, very common sense type of wisdom. Chapter 21, verse 3. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Uh, now, if you've studied uh, the rest of the Old Testament and in the New uh, but if, if you've studied the, pro of the, the prophets, that should be a very familiar statement, that, a very familiar idea. Um, God is more interested in, in righteousness and justice than sacrifice. Uh, we see things like this in uh, Amos, in Isaiah, in Micah. They're always talking about the people thought, as long as they, they went and performed their acts of worship, at uh, the temple or the tabernacle, uh, then they could act however they wanted to the rest of the time, and God, God condemns them through the prophets for that. But we also see this idea in wisdom books, in, in Proverbs. It's more important to be righteous and just. And not that sacrifice is not important, but um, the temptation is to think that sacrifice just uh, buys you off and you can behave however you want the rest of the time and that is not a wise way of going about things verse 9 uh, we're going to get into a couple controversial ones here at least controversial um, in the battle between the sexes let's say so 21 verse 9 it is better to live in a corner of the housetop than in a house shared with a quarrelsome wife. Uh, maybe I'll just leave that out there for you husbands and wives to debate. Better to live in a corner of the housetop than in a house shared with a quarrelsome wife. And then if you jump to verse 19 of that chap chapter, it's the same thing, just in a little different way of expressing it. It is better to live in a desert land than with a quarrelsome and fretful woman. Again, I'm just going to leave that to your to your household and your 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 marriage uh, to sort of battle that one out. Uh, verse 13 of that chapter. Now, this one should sound familiar to one we already read today. Uh, verse 13, chapter 21. Whoever closes his ear to the cry of the poor will himself call out and not be answered. Uh, again, the, the, the virtue of listening to, hearing, and, and ministering to those in need is, is extolled and expressed here. Whoever closes his ear to the cry of the poor will himself call out and not be answered. Be careful about not taking care of somebody in need, you may well be in need one day and be ignored. Uh, basic common sense, right? Uh, in in 21.13. Chapter 22, verse 1, is one of the famous ones, I think, from, from the Proverbs in general. A good name 
is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. There are some things more valuable than money, wealth, and riches, like a good name and being in favor with other people because you're, you treat them right, that kind of thing. Verse 6 is another famous one out of the Proverbs and, sadly, a lot of times misapplied. Uh, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's a basic truth. Good training leads to good results. But remember the nature of Proverbs. They're general statements of truth. They're not laws. They're not covenant promises. Sometimes it doesn't work out that good training leads to a good result. Because every person has their their own freedom of choice, whether they're going to follow that training and, and abide by it their entire life or not. Um, that verse should never be used to shame or beat over the head a good parent who tried their best to train a child. But in general, it's true. Parent, good parental training uh, will have good results. That's what that is trying to express. Verse 7 of the same chapter, the very next one, the rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the slave of the lender. Uh, that might be somewhat offensive and almost seem contradictory to some of the, the ones about the poor that we've already read, but uh, I think the point that, that's trying to be expressed there is, is be careful uh, about being in that borrower status. You know, you, you can enslave yourself by debt. And, and so this idea that the borrower is the slave of the lender um, is a warning. The wise person will be very careful about going into debt to somebody or to, to an institution or credit card, whatever it might be, uh, for college. Um, so that is a general statement of truth. I always tried to uh, to underline that one when I taught younger people or college students because debt is a problem in that age group. Chapter 22, verse 13. Now we're, we're back to our old friend, the sluggard, the lazy person. And here it says, the sluggard says, there's a lion outside, I shall be killed in the streets. Uh, that, that's the whole proverb. Uh, what's it saying about the sluggard there? Uh, you know, the sluggard will, will bring up any excuse uh, to maintain their lazy state, to not go out and do the things that need to be done. And so there's danger. I might be killed, that kind of thing. The sluggard says these kinds of things. There's a lion out there. I'll be eaten if I go out, if I go to work. I might be killed. And so uh, we see how he is described. Uh, the new section begins somewhere in, in um, chapter 22 and 23. If you look at the outline we gave you, uh, you can see um, where these additional selected sayings of the wise begin about halfway through chapter 22. And, and so um, we're going to look at a few more of these um, in this session and pick out some uh, that maybe need a little more explanation and comment. So chapter 23, verse 10, is one that um, might not at first um, be obvious to us because it talks about ancient custom. 23, verse 10 of Proverbs says, Do not move an ancient landmark or enter the fields of the fatherless. Again, this links us to something we often see either in the law or in the prophets. Um, what's he talking about, this ancient landmark? Well, uh, a lot of times there would be a stone in a field that would mark off property boundaries and that kind of thing. And... Um, one could easily uh, move that and claim a neighbor's property as your own by moving the ancient landmark. I've actually found uh, 
at least where, where I live here in Lancaster, they're still using stones to mark property lines. Now, I mean, if you really want to be official about it, you need to call uh, the, the city and get a survey done, and, and there are official records about what actual property lines are, but, it, but a lot of stones in yards in, in Lancaster, I've noticed, that's sort of the way it was always done in the ancient world, and it could very easily be moved, and you could steal property from somebody. And in particular here, notice um, that um, people would do this to people who had lost their parents, the fatherless, it's, are mentioned here. Many times it will mention the widow. So those who were particularly vulnerable um, were taken advantage of. The prophets, uh, Isaiah and, and those guys, were really upset about this. And God spoke through those prophets. This kind of thing was going on in Israel. And it's why Israel and Judah eventually uh, you know, lose their, their freedom and independence. They're destroyed because of behavior like this. Um, ancient landmark was a property marker, a boundary marker. And so this proverb is really in defense of the poor. It's very uh, interesting that in, in Israelite wisdom literature you have a lot of things like this where uh, the widow and the fatherless are protected. Um, nearly all the kinds of literature we find in the Bible, um, uh, wisdom lit or, or law, you can find um, from other ancient cultures. So, for instance, the Egyptians have laws, that you can, law systems that you can read. They have wisdom literature. So do the Babylonians, the Assyrians, and so forth. Uh, but one thing that's unique to Israel is statements like this, where the, the poor and the vulnerable of society are, are protected. It's in Israelite law. It's in Israelite wisdom. Um, that is, is, is unique in the ancient world and um, tells us something about the origin of, of this this literature, uh, it's it's from God because that's what He's like, and He wants His people to be like like that. A little, little bit later in chapter 23, um, beginning at verse 29, we're back to the problem, the danger of strong drink. We have a little bit longer section, not just a one verse uh, proverb here, but listen to this section addressing. Uh, the danger of drinking. Um, begins in verse 29, I'll go down through verse 35. It begins with a set of questions. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaining? Who has wounds? without cause, who has redness of eyes, those who tarry long over wine, those who go to try mixed wine. Do not look at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup and goes down smoothly. In the end it bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. Your eyes will see strange things and your heart utter perverse things. You'll be like one who lies down in the midst of the sea, like one who lies on the top of a mast. They struck me, you will say, but I was not hurt. They beat me, but I did not feel it. Uh, pretty descriptive uh, warning against the danger of strong drink. All the problem you can get into um, just done in sort of a poetic, memorable way. Next chapter, chapter 24, and, and verse 7. We're back to um, something about the fool here. Where it says, Wisdom is too high for a fool. In the gate he does not open his mouth. Uh, 
Now we understand, I think, the part of uh, wisdom being too high for a fool. But uh, in the parallel line, what is this about in the gate he does not open his mouth? Again, we have to sort of get back into the ancient context. Um, these cities in the ancient world um, were built with walls. And uh, one of the most important part of any city wall was the gate. And we think of a gate as, you know, a, a creaky thing that you swing open. Uh, but their gates were very complex. They were defensive structures and, uh, and, and large a lot of times. And in peaceful times, they were sort of gathering places because uh, there, there was a lot of room there. There a lot of times would be places to sit and so forth. It was almost, you might say, like a mall or a public gathering area. And the elders of the city would meet in the gate of the city. And, uh, and, and the gate was sort of the place where the wise got together and, and conversed. And so the, you see here, um, if the fool goes to the gate, he doesn't open his mouth because he really doesn't have anything to say among the wise, is the idea of, of this proverb, chapter 24, verse, verse 7. A little bit later in, in that same chapter, we have again the sluggard appear. Um, and, and this one I, I take time to read because it's a little bit more extensive a description and just very picturesque, I, I guess, guess we might say. We're at verse 30 of chapter 24 where it says, I pass by the field of a sluggard. But the vineyard, or by the vineyard of a man lacking sense, and behold, it was all overgrown with thorns, the ground was covered with metals, and its stone wall was broken down. Then I saw and considered it, I looked and received instruction, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber, and want like an armed man. So we have, again, this problem that is constant uh, throughout the book of Proverbs of the sluggard, uh, the lazy person. And here's an example where he sort of passed by his house and everything is falling apart. He hasn't mowed his grass. Um, the house needs painted. Why? Not because he's poor, but because he's lazy and he's not taking care of of business and, and so you have this sort of famous state statement a little sleep a little slumber and a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will come upon you like a robber um, this is also found in uh, in chapter 26 verses 13 through 16 um, the sluggard says there's a lion in the road we heard that earlier there's a lion in the streets as a door turns on its hinges, so does a sluggard on his bed. You see the picture there, uh, the parallel between the door, door hinge, and the sluggard just, he stays in bed all day, he just turns back and forth. The sluggard, it says in verse 15, chapter 26, buries his hand in the dish. It wears him out to bring it back to his mouth. How lazy that is, you know. He's too lazy even to bring his hand back to his mouth to eat. And then verse 16, the sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. So he thinks he's so smart. He's smarter than everybody else. Actually, he is a fool. He is, he is the sluggard. Chapter 25, verse 11. I, I just love this one because it's a beautiful image and a powerful message where it says a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. If you can sort of picture that golden apples sitting on silver tray, that's how beautiful a word spoken correctly at the right time, a word fitly spoken is. How, how important a good word is. It's a beautiful thing, like 
apples of gold in a setting of silver. And then uh, a little bit later in chapter 25, whoever sings, this is uh, verse 20, I'm sorry, of chapter 25, whoever sings songs to a heavy heart is like one who takes off a garment on a cold day and like vinegar on soda. Uh, think about that, that proverb. What's that saying? Whoever sings songs to a heavy heart. So you've got a person that's hurting for whatever reason. Their heart is heavy. And you sing, you sing songs to them. Uh, I assume happy, joyful songs. Uh, the one who does that is like one who takes off a garment on a cold day. Right? That is not appropriate, you see. And it's like vinegar on soda. Two things that don't mix well. Vinegar, something very alkaline, right? Or uh, very acidic. Vinegar, soda, something very alkaline. You mix those two. Both, both are destroyed. Uh, that's, that's like somebody who sings songs to a heavy heart. So um, not recognizing that a person is hurting and ministering to them in the way they need. Um, instead, um, sort of ignoring their plight. I just, again, Proverbs are very practical, everyday common sense kinds of things. And then in the next verse, uh, verse 21 and 22 go together. And hopefully these sound familiar to you. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he's thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. Now, hopefully that is something that you've heard before. Uh, and if you've read uh, the New Testament book of Romans, in particular chapter 12, verses 14 through 21, you'll see that Paul quotes this proverb as he talks about um, how to deal with enemies, and he, he uses a big chunk of that proverb we just read. Uh, Romans 12, again, he begins this section, Romans 12, 14, Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. And, and says a couple more things in a, in a section that really sounds like Proverbs. And then he actually quotes the Proverbs. Um, down verse 19, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And then verse 20, To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. This is where Paul quotes uh, this, this proverb, chapter 25, verses 21 and 22. Uh, and so, uh, that might be a good place for us to, to end today. Again, just sort of sur surveying through um, Proverbs. And hope you see how you can find one to address just about any situation of life. And uh, Proverbs, it's one of those places in the Bible, in, in general, this isn't a good practice, but it's one of those places in the Bible where you can sort of open up randomly uh, the book of Proverbs and, and stick your finger on uh, a verse on the page and really benefit by just looking at that verse. Uh, that doesn't always work in, in the rest of Scripture, sort of just throwing the Bible open and pointing to a verse because we really have to consider context. But Proverbs, a lot of times, uh, each individual one is its own context and you can see what the meaning is often and so it's a great book to just be in on a regular basis we can benefit a lot from it so I hope hope this is going to remind you of that we're going to continue with this and finish up um, next time we'll uh, look at just a few more favorites but then we're going to uh, go toward the end of, of the book and, and look at one of the great um, uh, one of the great um, extended uh, some poems in scripture that's become very famous the, the one about the worthy woman and some other things and then we'll we'll finish up and be heading to another wisdom book next time.
Again, appreciate you tuning in. Hope this is a blessing to you. Hope you're having a good week and and uh, enduring and persevering and uh, looking for ways to serve others. We will see you soon. God bless you.